Hello and welcome to Witchy Wellness Radio. I'm your host, Lauren Cholantani, women's holistic health coach and fellow recovering perfectionist. This podcast was created to show you that your body is not in the way, it is actually leading your way. I am very particular about the type of CBD and hemp products that I use. There's so much hype and lack of testing and quality in the industry. So the company that I love and use is Evo Hemp. Not only do they have a beautiful product like hemp seeds, CBD oil, gummies, even hemp chocolate, protein bars, protein powder. They also support a 40-acre co-op farm in Minnesota, which is farmer-owned, focusing on bringing quality and innovation back to Black, Indigenous, and other socially disadvantaged farmers. So if you are looking into trying any type of CBD or hemp products, head over to evohemp.com. The link is in the show notes. And make sure you use code WITCHY, W-I-C-T-H-Y, for 20% off of your purchase. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Witchy Wellness Radio. This is the show you get to learn how your body and emotions are not in the way. They're actually leading the way. And we're going to learn about this and more of how our own feminine energies that flow in nature, as long as long with the uh, masculine as well. We have, we're chatting today with Andre Paradis. He has been studying people his entire life. And over a decade ago, he was compelled to teach his findings and knowledge to the masses for that they kept asking him why things seem so hard and confusing when dealing with relationships, people, and life. Often relationships can seem to be a power struggle. The magic is to be fully aware of the energy mechanism in place in these dynamics and learn to negotiate the terms to reduce power friction. Mm-hmm. Andre is married for over two decades as a proud parent of two teens, and his expertise spans not only over his knowledge and studies, research and expertise as a coach, teacher, educator, mentor, and public speaker, but also over his actual life's experience in dating, love, parenting, and business. I am excited to jump into this polarity with you today. Welcome to the show, Andre. Lauren, thank you so much. Good Uh, intro. Yeah, well, it's your intro. I I know, I know. And I go, (laughs) wow, that sounds pretty good. Who's that guy? Oh, wait. (laughs) Yeah, I do that too. When 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 I actually go on other podcasts, I'm like, Wow, I want to talk to this lady. This, is, this is, <laughs> sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. It is kind of cool. Um, yeah, we talked off air, and I, I'm not, not even a disclaimer, but like this is what I the conversations I like to have here is we're talking about polarization. We're talking about masculine and feminine here today, and where men and women fall into that. And so, if you are in, interested in learning how to tap more into your feminine, or maybe you're having a power struggle in your relationship. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And there might be stereotypes said, but these are actually things you can find in nature, things that science has proven. This is how creation is created itself. Without these polarities, nothing would would exist. So with that kind of disclaimer, um, how did you get into this work? Where, you know, did you have your own power struggle and relationships before this, or did you just kind of intuitively get this? Oh, Jesus. so I'm trying, it's, it's my life has three folds. So yeah. I'm, if I do it, I'll try to do it quickly because it's kind of, but, um, my whole story started when I was five years old. I was, I, I, I was five years old. I remember sitting in steps in my house where I put it in, in a flash. I finally put my. I understood my circumstances as a kid, as a little kid, when I put my thoughts to my feeling. And then when I just click and I was five and what came to me that was quite devastating is that was, I was obviously born in the wrong family. <clears throat> These people didn't like me. We did had nothing in common. I was an oddball. I was an outsider in within a family of seven, five kids. I'm number four and I don't belong here. Like something is very wrong. And I just, it was always wrong, but at five is when it kind of went, like, my thoughts and feelings came together. It was like, wow. So devastating, scary. Um, but from that moment on, I was superly aware that it that was just up to me. Like, I was going to have to raise myself, take care of myself, defend myself, protect for myself, which is 
five is little, right? Five. Is, so, um, but the next second when that all came together, um, I became an observant of people. Like my, my, my radar went, right? Because I was trying to make sense of how is it possible? How can you be, how can you land on the wrong family? How, how does that work? How is that, right? So I started watching people. I was always the odd kid in school. I was a kid that didn't fit anywhere. I was a dork, right? Blended into the wall kind of thing. But I was watching. I was watching, relentless, relentlessly watching. And I became fascinated with the human condition. Like, and it started with my trying to understanding and then watching people and different types of people. And the more unusual the person was, the more I was interested in them and fascinated. And how'd you get to be like you, right? It was like, uh, so I kind of, that was, so my, my, my mode of operation was watching, studying, watching, studying. And, and it's funny because you start pick up, you pick up energy when you start watching, you pick up vibes, right? So I started at five, let me just say. So I'm kind of quite, the radar is quite sharp, you know, at this stage of my life. So, um, fast forward a little bit. So, um, no good in school. No good with friends, right? just oddball. I, I 16 years old, I went to a private high school college. It was both, and uh, it was fancy, it was private. So I ended up for the PE program, you could take ballroom lessons. <laughs> ballroom dancing. And this young girl came up to me and said, Oh my God, I need a partner. Do you want to partner with me? You know, I need a partner, otherwise I can't stand up. And I'm like, What, what, what? Ballroom? I'm like, cute little thing i'm like uh yeah like i didn't even know she knew i existed so i started that was my first experience in dancing um and it was a mat that so first class ever i had never done this in my life i hold a girl in my arms and whatever the teacher does i got it that's interesting and then the next class i had it and then and, and turned out that i just Realized that I discovered I had a gift. I guess I could copy everything I see. Right. So interesting. So really quickly, I went from geek to student's assistant, teacher's assistant, star student, star of the class. All the girls want to dance with me. <laughs> like, woo, woo, right? Different life. Um, and I realized that's actually brought me joy because I was a sad little kid from my, my circumstances. And I think I first smile in a dance class. Like there's something about that. You don't understand that. Like when you, the vibrations of music and the, the movements, right. That when the body vibrating and music come together, it's euphoric. It's just sort of this, Oh, like you get such a rush of good feeling hormones, all a cocktail of them. Right. It's the same thing with a singer. If you've seen singer, like hit a note and they start crying because literally the vibration the body and the note that the, the the air just it's just it's almost like a godly sort of it's it's amazing anyway so i got hooked on that i mean i was a dork i was sad and i so anyway so that is right away within a few months i decided i was going to do only that do only that i was going to dance nothing else mattered nothing else made me happy nothing else you know i had a talent for it and it made me smile boom so fast forward, I made that a career. So I moved, I'm, I'm Canadian originally. I moved, I got all my training in Vancouver where I moved to when I was uh, young, uh, 19 and made my way to Los Angeles, ended up working, it was phase two of my life. I worked with Michael Jackson, I worked with Prince, I worked with Paul Abdul, Hulu Glazius, and a bunch of people. I traveled the world, I got paid to teach, to perform. Woo! So. That dream, that little, that that sort of gift of God, I took it all the way, and I was successful at it. Um, I met my wife uh, dancing; she's a ballerina, so I know <laughs> dancer and a dancer. And if you look behind us, look, it's us dancing, <laughs> ballroom dancing. Oh, I love that! That's so, beautiful. But it's interesting because that whole metaphor of dancing and relationships, you know, it's the metaphors used for ballroom dancing are the metaphors that work in the dance of relationship, I call it. So my dance career, my dance life, my entire life is a, got me here. So and eventually in 2006, I had, I got off the road when we started the family. I wanted to be a present daddy. So I wasn't going to be in Europe or somewhere, right? So I got off the road. I opened a business in L.A., 
two blocks, you know, six, six minutes from my house, two blocks from the school, because I want to be present, right? So me and my wife, both of us were at all the all the parades, all the the, the meets, you know, all the recitals, every you know, because that's the way I wanted it. I set it up so I was grounded and with my family. Uh, so in that, I was always part of my brain, curious brain, watching everything brain learning everything i want to learn i want to know everything i want to, i'm curious about everything and so if you have something that you specialize in i want it like it doesn't matter if it's you know the study of blood plasma in in, in this you know, <laughs> the atmosphere of astronauts like it, it's oh my god let's be no let's find it you know if so <clears throat> i spend my since i was 23 years old i was i took personal development classes personal development courses weekends Week long, right? So I was always a guy doing. That was me. I, you know, most most of it was personal development in the beginning. Get my life together from my background, and then money and business. You know, to get sharper in my da 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 da. Anyway, so that never stopped. Still curious. Two thousand six, I was in a business workshop up in San Jose, Northern California, and I met this couple on the way back, flying back. We we're sitting in the same row and coincidentally watch the coincidence not she says to me i <laughs> just same row flying back from the, she goes what do, you, what do you do next weekend and i go i don't i don't work on the weekend and she goes you want to come to a workshop it's on me right i go hell yeah right and then i go oh, wait because that's my brain right because those things could be expensive super expensive right so she's inviting me so i'm like sure so yeah, oh, by, by the way, what's the workshop? I don't even know what I'm doing. Because <laughs> I learned something. She's like, oh, it's called Understanding Women. Okay, right? Now, you have to understand, because of my dance life, artistic style, I always attracted sweet women. I didn't do the madness that my friends did with their girlfriends. I didn't do the yelling and the scenes and the, you know, pow, like none of that. It was, I attracted sweet women. It was always easy and i thought it was me i actually thought i am so whatever even though i couldn't have described it i just thought i got this look my wife's an angel she's the sweetest you know but i've always so i'm not looking for this information we're good but by then we're together we have a baby and a toddler so life is good but i okay so i go to the workshop on the weekend a little bit like hey, whatever you know it's gonna be cute when I walked in, there's a big airport hotel, 400 people in space. And I remember going, oh, oh, like, okay, this isn't going to be cute. Something going on here. Like, I felt it, but there's something, like, important happening here. I sat down. The workshop went in. We finished the workshop. My, my brain's all over the wall. My brain completely exploded. I knew. I realized in that workshop that i knew nothing about women absolutely zero not like not even a little bit like zip zip but the scariest thing is i knew nothing about my wife and then i realized because we learned some of the stuff as well in in the workshop how a woman processes why they take things personally everything whether it's personal or not you take it personally like, that's not because you're crazy there's a reason for that what so you know and i I love my wife. I never, I never want to hurt her feelings. I'm constantly hurting her feelings. But like, and, and so that's all dangerous, right? Like, like, so like I panicked, you know? So I took, of course, is my brain. And I jumped right into the, the company's curriculum. I took all their workshops. A year later, I'm a workshop leader for them because I'm a teacher. So that's just, <laughs> just natural transition. But that's how it started. So from there, I didn't work out with a company, but from there I went on with John Gray, Mars and Venus to research, add, add his material to what I knew with that material. And then uh, Shanti Felhan in the South to teach us love and respect. Oh, right. Esther Perel, who was no not known back at the time. She's huge now, but that was like like her her old uh, angle of love intimacy, right? Like huge. Like these are all part of building a relationship, parts of different channels. Dr. John Gray, Mars and Venus, the past, the past 10 years, this entire body of work has been about chemistry and the chemistry of our brains, of our bodies that make us behave differently, right? Men and women are the same? No. Equal, equal importance, you know, equal human being important, right? But they're not the same. 
but that you know in a culture that got kind of transgressed transgressed over that a guy should be like a girl right to be more valuable and then women should be like men to, no right this is what the chaos that we were experiencing today so and then dr pat allen in los angeles here is a therapist i'm trained by a therapist but i'm not a therapist but i work with dr allen one-on-one for three and a half years so i the cocktail of what i have in here is untouchable I'm saying, like, without arrogance, right? Like, the, it all, when you connect the five together, like, you, I could explain to you human behavior, men and women, why relationships work, the polarity, why, how you make a dance, the love, the dance, or love relationship, like a dance, bottom couple work. This, there's some, you have to learn this. Bottom dancers don't look like this thing is so easy and gliding and natural and, so beautiful and it looks effortless. There's a lot of practice in that. There's a lot of work in that. There's an investment in that. Time and money. You know what I mean? A relationships, a real healthy love relationship is the same thing. You don't know, we don't, not, we're, we're, <laughs> men and women are not the same. We actually do everything in the exact opposite. So we're perfect combined together. We complement each other, but we're not the same. So just to, to, to to assume and to try to make men act like women because it's easier for women or it'd be a lot more congruent, like, because act like a girl, then the, everything's going to be great, except it's, it's illogical. It's not natural. It's insane. It doesn't, it's not even close to possible. And then women empower women. That's great. That's fantastic. You know, strong, independent, and powerful to a point, but that when women are too masculine, they repel repel i'm gonna say it again repel men masculine men now in our culture we have we have feminine men now who thinks they're better than the rest of us right who women <laughs> they think they're more attractive to women because they're so sweet and feminist and you go girl and i'm i believe in you honey well he's sleeping you know spooning the dog and smoking the joint you know what i mean and doing nothing because she's working two jobs go girl right so like we've flipped the flipped the script and it's a disaster. Is it that's all that's what I do all day long. Like it's a disaster. I can't tell you. But everybody thinks it's supposed to be easier. We finally equalize the field. Mm-hmm. Right? That should be easier. Should, like women are not, you know, driven by the patriarchy anymore and they have freedom and all the choices. Absolutely fantastic. Way to go. It's not working. Men are finally like you know detoxified and they're sweet and we expect them to be sensitive and vulnerable. How's that going? Yeah, yeah, it's not working. Not working right? at all. We neutralize. We, anyway, so that's yeah. I just went off, didn't I? So sorry. You're, you go. you're good. You're good. I was just gonna ask. Yeah, I mean, I know myself, right? That I have to watch how much I'm in my masculine a lot of the times because when you have a lot of drive. Uh-huh. You step in that masculine and you just want to keep going. So it's that dance internally. Uh-huh. I know a lot of women can can relate to that. And that's what I love helping women with is like tuning into your balance. We have each of those in us, both. right? Like we have we, both. We have both. Yep. You you can't be polar either. Like you have more feminine qualities or more masculine qualities as a man or a female. And yep. yeah, for me, I could just but but that's how society I see feminism like Ugh. in that respect we've we've put on the role of a man like we put our own business suits on to do the work to work harder to to you know sleep at our desk basically yep. but that's yep. I don't think I know masculine is kind of like the go getting you know get shit done kind of energy but like that's not lovable for anybody and just to prove yourself as a woman you don't need to do that and that's what i'm learning is like (sighs) my parents generation like my mom had to push and push and push just to get her foot in the door anywhere whether it was high school sports they didn't have any female high school sports whether it was trying to get into medical school like no not very many females were accepted and now it's like okay well let's look at my generation where you might have big ambitions but you you need to really watch and watch the dance I guess if you will so I want to transition my tangent into what is that dance and like what is that masculine what is that feminine what what are those archetypes I don't even say stereotypes like they're archetypes yeah absolutely absolutely so 
So I just before we go there, I want to ask you something. So what happens to you as a young woman? So you still have a lot of energy because you're young, right? Like the the things goes goes to shit. You typically at about forty with the pulse of masculine pushing, yeah. competing, conquering, fighting. You know, go get it, go 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 go. It's it's all possible when you're twenties and thirties, and then you go straight to hell, right? All kinds of sickness, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. Like the women fall apart, burn out, right? Yeah. And they, they can, but physically there's no proof, you know? So I have my, having to my sister, ridiculous stuff, right? And and because I'm on Dr. John Gray's work, right? You're not wired or built for that. You don't have the fuel for that. So my example that pisses ladies off, but sorry, blame God. I'm talking, I'm teaching you nature. It's like, you've seen Formula One races, Formula One races, the cars with the four wheels, they just stick and the guy inside, right? They go 400 miles an hour, right? So that's man and testosterone. And you ladies decide to get in the race, and that's fine, right? Like, but you get in, you don't get in the, the slow race, you get in the Formula One race, and you Toyota Camry, four cylinder, pedal to the metal, right? And you got to get around, you got to get on and get around with the boys for a while until your engine blows out. You're not built for that, right? So I hate to say this. The first time I, I taught this to my sister, and she's a millennial, and she's like, I don't like that. I'm like, you're here to call God. Here we go. This thing is not try 911. Right? Yeah. It's nature, right? Like it's, you don't have to like it, but yeah. there's a lot of proof. There's a huge amount of data now since the mid 70s about women burning out, getting developing cancer, and dying early from the adrenaline rush is called being adrenalized all the time because yeah. men men have testosterone to sustain that kind of lifestyle that energy comes with testosterone women end up using um adrenaline a fight and flight response every time you have to compete is a, a squirt of adrenaline in your blood <laughs> squirt every time you're fighting every time you a meeting every time it's stressful right so interesting enough the regular stress of life right this like stress of life would mean like you know, getting up on Monday morning, showering, getting in the car, driving to work, getting, you know, getting to work, getting stuff done, getting the meetings done, hitting the numbers, you know, like, and then getting back on the car, driving home, like the regular week stress, we call it. On men, the mo the, the, that regular, not dangerous stress, just that stress of getting on and getting stuff done is tantalizing to the masculine. It wakes us up. Right, say like, okay, let's go. Right, like, yeah. like, like it raises our, our awareness and our sharpness, and we go and push. And that pulse, that stress, that that healthy stress, actually builds testosterone because we get results. Ha! High five. We got the contract, and that distresses the body. So again, mm -hmm. a man fighting, competing, builds testosterone that relaxes the body. So yeah. something has been accomplished. Ah, good day's work. Ah, now we relax and do it again the next day. On a woman's body, the same work week is she's this is John Gray's work, six times more stress to do the same work, six times more stress to do the same work. You don't get tantalized by the, the stress. You go into the twilight zone, right? And it's adrenaline, adrenaline in your vein. Right? Squirt, 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 squirt. This is why you get burnout and then you fall apart. Yeah, you've been you've been running on adrenaline, which is really it's it's too much. And now we know again this data on this, not my opinion, right? That it's called adrenal burnout, which is we know now that the adrenaline in your blood streams for years of competing like men. The higher the competition, the more stressful the job is, the worse it gets. They call that cancer training for women. That lifestyle, cancer training for women. Mm -hmm. And they know that after 20, 25 years of that pace of life, being adrenalized for this many years, it will kill you. Yeah. All kinds of cancers, all, wherever you, the weakness in your body will fail. And all of a sudden, you know, you can't sleep or you can't stay asleep. This is the first sign, right? You, you, you don't rest after 10 hours of sleep. You're not rested. You're, right? You feel like you have cold symptoms, but you're not sick. And it, I have like tons of examples of this. So yeah. I, I, like, so I, this is kind of important to know, right? Yeah. Like, the, you, the quality of your life may completely disappear trying to do a man's job with something that men are completely willing to do and they're actually, you know, like wired and chemically 
built for so we can prove that we're stuff as guys. It seems like a really crazy price to pay. Yeah, right? I do. I do have a question. So Please. this is just my head putting it together. So I know the men's hormone hormonal cycle is 24 hours and mm-hmm. a women's hormonal cycle is depending on our cycle, 25 to 30 days. Yeah. So is that like, is that play a factor into the science? Cause I like the science behind all everything. Yeah, yeah, is that yeah, what yeah, plays yeah. the factor into the, what you just described? Because yeah. I know for me during my menstruation, yeah. first day of my period, I don't do anything. I rest. And my period is a number one indicator of how I did the month before with that masculine feminine energy, because my body, my body keeps the score. Yep. And if I'm exhausted, if I have a lot of cramps or symptoms or acne or whatever, bloating, I know yep. I push too hard. Yep. And and then when I'm, I, I get follicular phase and ovulation, ovulation, I'm, I'm not working full force, but I'm out there and I'm shining. Yep. And then I slowly start to decline again. I try to keep that. That's helped me the most. But the first few days of my period, I do nothing. So is that the solution? And is that the science that you're referring to? I just want to, I'm trying to put the puzzle pieces. Yeah. yeah no. So the, there's a bunch of layers, but this is again, the chemistry of yeah. trying to be productive, trying to be competitive, yeah. right? Everything that men pride themselves in doing naturally, right? It's, it's the hunter paradigm as opposed to the gatherer paradigm, right? We're talking like millennia of genetic yeah adaptation dna adaptation so man man hunters back then men are bigger and stronger than the females who are smaller and weaker just statute wise again women get all offended i'm like like, i don't know how you get offended about that it's just fact right like you can be offended about the fact that you die you know gestate and make babies and i don't but (laughs) <laughs> but some women get bent by the shape of you know like wow no okay so let's bring it back to nature let's, let's bring it back right and it's so like your your chemical the, your chemical system your hormonal system is all based around you cycling mm-hmm. monthly to to fertilize an egg to continue the species we don't have that we have you know <laughs> we have this constantly going you know, a sack full of sperm that's trying to ex- like get out every day, every day. Like, I don't know if you can explain to a woman, I think, you know, the one day or two, it's not so one day cycle for the ladies when the hormones, you're at your peak and you're the most fertile. So you become, you become horny. Yeah. Right? Ovulation. Like yeah. Ovulation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that, that one day when you're like, Oh shit. Right. Right. Because again, nature is going, it's, I'm ready. Let's make a baby because <laughs> nature is all about continuing the species. Yeah. Right, so your body's going, eh, even if your brain, eh, well, maybe this, I don't know if it's news to you. So imagine that every single day of your life. That would be us. That would be me. Yeah, I've heard that before. I've definitely so heard that it's before. Pretty, it's pretty harsh, right? It's pretty harsh, yeah. but it's, it's the chemistry of our body. So you have a whole system going on a 30 day cycle. We have an ongoing system to basically always be ready to procreate and spread our seeds spread our seeds to make babies to continue the species but like in nature the female's in charge of deciding when to copulate right the female sits the males are fighting amongst themselves look how bigger i'm bigger i have better sperm i'm stronger again the competition for the best sperm to make best offsprings to make healthier offsprings who will survive nature is all about survival so in in nature the female sits and watches the guy make full of themselves <laughs> until she's ready. And the guy who beat everybody's ass gets to be the one that, you know, that gets to make good babies with the, 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 the alpha female. And then it goes down. Right. So, and same thing. So now there's a pecking order depending on the status of each. Wow. Interesting. At every place in place in nature, you know, where, where, where they're herd animal, not insects, mm-hmm. but you know, like that. So, Women have a whole system going. Men have a whole system going. They're completely opposite, right? But again, they're made to come together and continue procreating, continue the species. So they're not... So when you start for a woman, for your your chemistry of your body to stay healthy and stable, it's actually... (laughs) Think about lifestyle again. We're going to talk about lifestyle that ruins your life or, or, or enhances your life. If you go back into cave woman days, right, the men would go hunting sometimes for three days, risk their lives, risk their limbs, right, to go fight, find some food so we all survive. 
the women, the gatherers, will stay behind, take care of the children, take care of the fire, take care of the spi spices, the, the, the you know the berries, whatever you needed. But it's also it was it was community. Mm -hmm. Community was important because women would, you know, some would wash the children, some would wash the fire, some would gather the seeds, some would weave the basket, some would be out there with liver, river doing laundry. But there was community. Women needed to stick together, not only to help each other survive in the community, but a woman alone in the woods is cat food to a tiger, right? Or to the bear. So women, in the, like a woman alone, is in danger. Sometimes it gets stolen by the, 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 the next door tribe. You know, they were still the women. It's unbelievable, right? So women know they're smaller and weaker. And the safety came sticking together, working together, you know, communing together. That's women today, right? You look at women. If you let women be, what do they do? They get together and they talk, you know, and they find something uncommon. And that, you know, whether it's your church community, your sewing group, your read, you know, your book reading club, or whatever, right? Like women come together and there's like unity in that, there's safety, there's connection, all healthy for the feminine. Now put a woman CEO on a, on a 26th floor fighting all day long. She, you know, she has no friends, she's stressed out. No one's can, you know, like men or there was <laughs> Uh, it's a good one. I don't want to be disrespectful, but they that masculine pace it irritates everybody she encounters. She burnt, she's burnt out at the end of the day, right? But she's making money. Is that a better life? I don't know. Yeah. Well, one would argue, I mean, would that be a better life for anybody, really, to be working but, that hard, really, to masculine or feminine aside? But so yeah, there's a so spot what, in the middle, right? It's a, I yeah. call it a sweet, a sweet spot in the middle. It's a modern way to do this instead of, you know, women sometimes misunderstand me completely. And they go, oh, you, you're trying to take us back to the 50s. Like, you want us to dumb it down? We yeah, you, you just read my next question in my mind. Right? I'm like, <laughs> that's not what I said. That's not what I'm talking about. There's a modern way to do this. There's a sweet spot in a modern way, right? You want to be productive. You want to be in the world doing your stuff, right? But you don't want to lose touch of your essence as a woman you don't want to go so against your body that you're going to explode eventually and the worst thing about this for the ladies is that men want nothing to do with you you irritate you or repel them or you repel them yourself What's that? push you push them away yourself because well who, you know if you're in your head like that that's my experience is <sighs> let me do it myself i don't you know don't there See you go. Later. You, right. you know, whether they're repelled by you or you would literally repel right. them. <laughs> right. So, but women, when they come to me, they're like, I don't understand. I'm still pretty. I'm still young. I have money. I have a career. I have a car. I have a house. And, uh, right. Then how come nobody wants to date me? Like, nobody wants to date me. And if I get a date, you know. He says, nice to meet you. I never see him again. Like, I can't get to a second date ever. I go, honey. There's nothing wrong with you because the, the next thing is what's wrong with me, which is, I think, is devastating, right? To think there's something wrong with you because Nate, you know, the culture told you, you go girl and get your shit together and make sure you're never vulnerable to any man. And, you know, and then a guy's going to think you're attractive and was going to, no, because when you're that masculine, you irritate men. Masculine men don't want anything to do with you. They see you a block away, they woohoo, right? They don't acknowledge you typically, they don't smile at you. Because you're a brick, <laughs> you know, because like, everything lovely about you is, it, you know, you're up in your head, right? You're not really present. So you act like a man in a woman's body. That's that's fine. You go girl, but you're invisible to men. So my clients come to me at 35 plus and now they're in pain. They're like, well, you know, I have everything now, but what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? I go, honey, you're just too masculine, you know, just you're too masculine. You have to like get the sweet spot right somewhere in between so like i teach them to bring back their femininity which typically lowers their, their mat they don't want to be so masculine anymore the moment they get a taste of this they go oh oh right because the body responds and now they want to relax and i always hear this they're like i don't want to work this hard anymore i like this feeling like <laughs> seriously i'm talking some bad asses right yeah and like i want some guy to help me out and yeah I, you know i yeah it'd be nice to have some help and Oh, there it is. There it is, right? Again, swinging back into the sweet spot, right? There's yeah. a place where you could be. I think my wife, 
as the be- the the best setup because she's a ballerina. She's you know she teaches at the colleges, right in in Los Angeles here, but it's part time. Gets paid really really well with benefits and all the the goodies of being a, a, a university teacher, but it's part time. So she yeah. gets to live her dream of being a ballerina. She mentors her kids and her students, right? These are all like 20 some year old, right? So she becomes their mentor, their guide. She has so much experience, right? So she delights in that. She, the, the, her nurturing nurturing essence is she gets to be all this in the world, affect these kids' lives forever. But then she's home at three o'clock to pick up my kids at school. And then she gets to like yeah. play with them in the pool, you know? In the middle of the afternoon, you know, like when I'm at work till 7:30, I'm okay with that. I, I'll kill myself to keep him in that space and that that lifestyle, right? But so she both gets to be a mother, a wife, and to live her dream. But she's not a brain surgeon. You know what I mean? She's not going to work in a stressful situation. You know, she's not a CEO in any company. It's like, like I said, my experience is when women go too far, they literally completely. Uh, end up denying their feminine essence and everything everything from there goes sideways i mean i'm in los angeles i went to a, one of my one of my clients ended up um I, I, she moved whatever i ended up seeing her at her new place and i walk in the house in this enormous freaking house in studio city like i i just i looked at him like like okay i'm impressed this is a big house an expensive area and I knew she told me it was a girlfriend's house. So I go, so your girlfriend was this place? So she was staying, she was staying with, with her temporarily in a room. I don't know why I was there. Why was I there? It doesn't matter. Anyway, so in my first, my first impression, I go, and this is, this is, this is going to sound terrible, but I'm just saying this is what it is. I go, so this is a girlfriend's house? Yeah. What did she do? big old corporate job and go is she married no does she have a boyfriend yeah no she can't work that out at all <laughs> like i'm like she goes why are you asking because i says because i'm looking at this house what it would take to run this place to buy this place to maintain to own this property it's something that you know it will take a ton of fighting ton of pushing right like two hundred thousand dollars a year type salaries i'm like that would instantly throw in super masculine, which means super complicated with men. That's I saw it right. Yeah, so yeah. Well, but also I will. I, uh, here's here's the devil's advocate in a way. Well, yeah. Why can't you set up your own business, your own career that fits your own feminine flow that does make two hundred k or more a year? I mean that I, I to me that's that's a me, sweet spot. That's, that's a, a sweet, sweet spot. spot. Yeah. You know, because yeah, I, I get what you're saying for sure, but I want to I want to be clear for the listeners, right? No, you can have all of that. What you're saying yeah. is, you, if you want to make five hundred thousand dollars a year, you can have that, but set yourself up for success in well, your life, right? And you don't have to work all the time. You deserve that that abundance, and time is also abundance as well. That's in my amen. life, Like I I try to get my shit on lockdown, and every single second is planned out because I need those boundaries so I can take that time for myself. So I can be with my family. So I can work on my podcast and my business. And eventually when I get my business up and going and I can quit my day job because I'm in my mask and a lot, I got, I juggle a lot right now. That's the dream. I'm not going to work harder in my business. No, I'm going to work the same amount of hours I am now or less. So I can make more. And, and and become more of me of having more time of being in that feminine, like the mask. And I wanted to say is the going and the doing right. And achieving what you beautifully il- illustrated, but we're not poo pooing the feminine, the feminine we have innately in our oh. bodies, our chemistry, the wisdom, we can tap in to the darkness. The darkness is nothing bad. That's that wisdom that comes with sitting with yourself with huh. listening into the intuition which can help guide the masculine and oh. and and i think of like building an empire if you're if you're with with your man like you're building an empire together i really like listening to elena cardone and grant cardone to their their he's a big real estate mogul and mm-hmm. she she now is in real estate too but she talks about this she's like don't knock yourself of being a stay-at-home mom if that's what you want to do. 
you know, yes. and, but she, but she has a book on building your own empire with your partner, with your husband, and you need to support each other's dreams and to let him, let him have his own guidance and his own direction and be able to be like, okay, they said, he said that um, a few years ago they were in LA and they just, they moved to Miami. He came home one day and said, honey, we're moving to Miami. And she said, I know this was a business decision. And because this is his zone of genius, there was no doubt in my mind. I trusted him and we went. And that and that's the kind of energetic relationship you're talking about. And she's a successful yeah. lady on her own. She was a model and actress and now has like almost, I don't even know, it's the world's largest real estate team. Um, but she's in that feminine flow, but she's, they have, they have a lot of billion dollars worth of real estate. Like they're not just some like, you know, they're not. Right, they're not cute. Like, they're, they're not cute. cute. Like, they're not doing well. They're yeah, doing but they're really, a good really example well. of that. Like he's very much yeah. in his masculine and she's still doing shit and, you know, and supporting him, but has her own stuff and have, able to be home with the kids Sweet too. Spot. Sweet, Sweet, spot. Spot. Sweet, Sweet spot. spot. Because I have big dreams and I have to, I have to make sure everybody here listening to this, right. Understands that like yeah. whatever you want to build in your life, it's possible, but listen to your body and it's innate wisdom. And, to, and and another one last tangent, intermittent fasting for women is horrible. People think that <laughs> seriously, they, they only tested it on men. And I could get on my high horse about this all day. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> it's horrible for women, especially if you're on your period, because your blood sugar levels just freak out. <laughs> yeah. You need to be eating when you get up. You need to be eating every few hours. Like you need to sustain that blood sugar. And yeah tangent so, over but those are my two big things when it comes to this <laughs> because a lot of this research with diets fad diets or scientifically based diets are not tested on women because of our menstrual cycle because it's hard to get a clear read on some but right. the repeat. results are unstable yeah they're unstable know. yeah so um, I, get it. I don't remember where we were at in our conversation but um <laughs> there, there's my me. there's my two cents so i guess so, the, go ahead um, so in relationships yes how, how we're, we talk about sweet spots personally, yep. but let's move to this relationship okay. or a relationship. Yep. How, how do these polarities dance together? Well, back to nature. Yeah. Interestingly enough. Right. So again, if, if our culture is trying to neutralize the difference between, between men and women in the idea of evening out the playing field and equality, making everything fair, equal rights, equal pay up, up, course 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 but that's not that's not what i'm talking about what what trans transgress from that equality paradigm is equal beings that a man should be more like a girl to be a good man that a man a woman should be more masculine you know be a badass it's badass is everywhere right badass boss babe go girl don't need no man what the fuck how do we get here how do we go from like you know having choices in life because feminism was about choices Right, you want to go to work. There's no obstacles, right? And then you want to stay at home, mom. Go, girl. Right, Do whatever. Make it. But now there's no choice. The choice is badass, boss, babe. Don't need no man. Crush it, you know. Crush man. Put the man behind you. Well, this is why I'm so busy because that doesn't work. Right? It's too much. The it's other good for way. business. It's good for business. Good for my business. <laughs> totally excited. So, but makes women miserable. It makes men, you know, really. Uh, disillusion right man is funny because women come to me with like where are all the good men they go they're everywhere it's funny men are saying something where are all the good women they're all freaking this disrespectful beasts right in the name of like, go girl and you know men are toxic men are dangerous you can't trust them anyway like well how's that gonna work well, that, that doesn't work right so we went too far into the we don't need men we went too far because, you know, the bit, get this, this is Dr. Gray again, right? As a woman, you are amazing. You're badass as you are. You've proven it for the past 60 freaking years. Okay, you win. You, you can do anything. What's the problem? What, what are you still proving, right? Like, what are you still proving? Like, and then I love the way he says it. It's like, and, and the fact that you're busy and you're proud of that is great. But the busier, the, the busier you are, the more you need a man to help you in life. Right? Not yeah. don't need no man. It's because you're busy is why you need a man to slow you down sometimes to go, babe, it's time to quit. To, yeah. okay, go, I'll take care of this. I got this. You know, like there's, there's a lot of deal making when you have a relationship in a marriage, right? Like 
me and my wife I had this the business full time, twelve hour days. But because I had set up a certain way, when she was special event or concert that she was doing, I'd pick up the kids at school because I could. Right? Does that make me the mom? That makes me the dad, right? But there's all these details and negotiations and pieces that come together to make the thing flow. But in the end, I did more of the outside work, I want to call it, right? More of the conquering world, building the business, 12-hour days, and and happy to do so because I could provide them with a lifestyle that made everybody comfortable, her and the kids. Like one of my favorite memories is pulling up in the garage, you know, in the summer when it's dark light, um, dark late, you know, pull up in the garage at seven o'clock, seven thirty, turn off my car, and then oh, and I can hear them all, they're in the pool, they're playing in the pool. They've been in the pool since three o'clock or so, right? I go, like, I did that. I'm not envious that I'm not in the pool. I'm the guy who prov- you know provided that, right? Like, ah, oh, like that's that's just uh, talking about a feeling of well being and pride. So men will pride themselves in killing themselves, and what they want to do is take care of their women because we know that if if my woman is comfortable in the house, you know, in her life, that she's not too exerted, she's relaxed, she's content, she's happy. Guess what happened when she's happy? Oh, I'm happy, right? Like <laughs> this is the whole idea of men want to make women happy because when you're good, I'm good. Right? Yeah. When when you edgy and burn out, I don't want to be around you. And I'm assuming right? intimacy goes way up Hello? with that as well. Hello. <laughs> so all you know what I mean? So yeah, like so if I do more of the outside work, which is tantalizing for me, a huge amount of pride, and I get to be the the man taking care of my wife and my kids, and to keep them a lifestyle that I find appropriate. You know what I mean? Everything else she does is cake, right? If she gets to go do a ballet and do classes and she loves it. Oh my God, she's happier. Great, right? But she also gets to take a pace, a life is pace that she is not inside out, tired, burnout, right? So she feels safe in the world because then, so she does more of the inside work, I call it, even though she has a whole life on her own, but it's not false to the wall, it's balanced. Right. So now I know it's not always, you know, women will say they said, well, that's not me. Okay. I don't have no man. So I asked it's all on me. And I go, hey, like what, at what level, how do you show up in the world that because there are men everywhere looking for women, like everywhere. And like, there's women everywhere looking for men everywhere and nobody's finding each other, even though they're right together. Right. I live in Los Angeles, 15 million, I think 16 now people. And nobody's getting together, but no bullshit, right? Like so, but because we're looking, we're looking for things that aren't natural, right? Women, women are looking for guys to meet him up there. Well, really, he's got to be like, you know, he's got to be. I don't compromise for nothing. <sighs> really, like so, badass. Like if another badass, these guys don't want. <laughs> Men don't want badass women. Men want happy women. I say this all the time, right? So what do men want? Men love happy women. Not stressed out, not adrenalized, not freaked out, not controlling, not pushy, not angry. Happy. It's pretty simple. But our, the way we raise you, we, you, you end up overwhelmed, stressed out, angry, edgy, over-nurturing, over-giving, over taking care of everybody and 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 it's interesting when a woman gets so far in her masculine her nurturing mechanism goes on steroids so you become over helpful to everybody except for yourself and it's right and you don't take care of yourself at all you Mm -hmm. always go last you know and eventually you burn out because you in in that over giving space over nurturing space you can't even receive anymore so you yeah. Pour out, pour out, pour out, pour out. And soon enough, you get resentful because you're stressed out, you're empty, you're exhausted, and no one's helping you, but you won't let them help you because you have to handle everything. But like, because they won't do it right, well, like, and eventually you become miserable. Like you see yeah. them everywhere. And you think men are going to jump in that? No, right? Like there's nothing about this attractive. It's like men love happy women. 
when you're stressed out and overwhelmed, man, stay the fuck away from you. <laughs> you know? So I, I'm just saying. So yeah, I no, no, no. I, I laugh because spot. What's the I, spot? That's guys- me in my life. If I go unchecked, and I think a lot of women are like, we're just I'm a millennial woman, and you're right, that's how it is. And it, that's been my own spiritual journey of like finding that balance in my life. And thankfully, tough. my body is a canary in a coal mine. My body will tell me Ooh, as well. Yeah. And so that, I have to listen to that. And that's a gift that you have. I'm going to yeah. tell you that because what I see is women lose that canary knowing, like lose connection with the body. Yeah. And then this is where they get in trouble. Mm-hmm. And then instinct goes away. Knowing, knowing stuff that a woman intuitively knows, you know, goes away. The radar Which is our superpower, our super Absol- fucking power as oh, women. Oh my God. Tell me. It is. Like, it is. I know. So when women come at me with, I don't know, <laughs> masking in their heads, I'm like, you got to get back here. Yeah. Like you get back here, but like, you know, so get this, to be masculine is to be in your head, to be feminine is to be in your body, in your in heart. Body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So all my clients come up here, This, they're all badasses, they're all up here, they're all masculine, they're all, but they're all so edgy and, you know, uncomfortable. <laughs> and what about this? And they get really confused up here, right? Because yeah. there's no, there's you can't make sense of it up here. Because your radar is here. Your divine radar is in your gut. So get this. It's interesting. There are more, there are more neural, uh, neural uh, transmitter in the gut of a woman than in a man. Oh, and we have, more, we have more neural sensors in our heads. So we're made to think more. And you're made to feel more. We both have both, but yeah. we're wired differently. I, we I both love have that. Both of everything. That's a fact. So when a woman is confused in her head, you're not going to make sense of it. That's why you start looking from the outside for help. Somebody help me. Astrology, you know, numerology, <laughs> freaking tarot cards, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> but no, no, wait, no, get out of here, get in here. Yeah. Listen yeah. to your body. Listen to your radar. As a woman, that only is it possible when you calm down, when you relax, when you de-stress, de-adrenalize, when you're good. Yeah. So it takes a huge amount of self-care for a woman to stay in her body nowadays, yeah. right? So, but that's essential to be connected and to be and get. And then you go, you go like they go like this, right? When you get a taste of that, millennials, <laughs> badasses, they're everywhere. You know, it's great and it's dangerous. But they go like this. Um, could you help me, please? Yeah. <laughs> and, men, and men jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because men so want to be, right? That's they want to be that. Yeah, yeah. That, I see that dynamic in my relationship, too. Is so I've played why? out all their stereotypes. And the more I, have, and I, it's a non fucking negotiable. Every morning I get up, it's me time. <sighs> it's me time. I meditate and do breath work every morning, first thing. I work out, whether it's yoga or stretching or so I go to the gym a few days a week with my partner just to be in my body. Body. I have a, one of those rebounder trampolines in my mm-hmm. office throughout the day. That is a really fun way to, to get in your body. And the I juice love, going. The, the juice, juice going. going yeah. And too shake long. it out. Dance parties. I'm just listening to things that have helped me get in my body. Like you love dancing, but you don't have to be a professional dancer. I am not at all, but that is music. such a beautiful divine feminine way to tap into yourself. Let the music move you and your body is going to move in different ways based on what you're working through and your energy. And like, like there, I mean, I'll, I've been caught in numerous dance parties where my partner will come up in awe and he's, it's like, he's drawn as a magnet without even knowing and just watching the divine feminine. And last night we were, we did this, this paint night and he's just like, honey, I love you. This is not my thing. I'll go with you. But like, he's a, he's a science and like business guy, like not. Yeah, yeah. So heady. And, and I, you know, my degree, it, my, um, college degree was in photography and you know arts and all this stuff so I'm like painting this laurel leaf and flowers and he you know he's looking up on google how to do a stick figure you know like painting and but he he just sat, sat there and watched me and now he's like I have never seen this side this this side of you and this feminine he's like you need to we need what do you want me to get do you want me to get you paints what do you want yeah, yeah. I'll get you know like he what the masculine wants to support that Totally. Right. And these are just these are just beautiful examples that everyday things 
that you can tap into that space that we have as a woman and as a man too, we, you know, we have those energies, but it fulfills you at such a deep level to be in your body. And that's what I, at the end of the day, that's what I teach women too, to shift out of the anxiety into alignment, out of your head, out out of your your head, head. into your body. Out of your head. Out of so your head. what are some other things, Andre, that to, you- To get you out of your body? Yeah, you get you in your, your head, you mean? yeah, and your body for women because for women, it's all kinds of stuff, right? Like, yeah. like the gatherer brain, you know, is about community. So get anywhere there's community, or yeah. be part of a community somewhere, whatever we find. You know, there's, you know, I, I have women joining like hiking groups, yeah. right? They just yoga not, studios, yeah. It, you name it, community. So be part of something where there's the women that you could chat da 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 with, and just like. Let nature what does nature does. Women feel safe, feel connected, feel heard, feel seen, feel part of. Ah, right? Like, but I have I have my ladies are all my clients are badasses. They're incredible, badasses. Like you wouldn't believe the shit that they do. Except the alarm just went off and they go, I can see the danger. I'm watching my body yeah. burn out. I'm watching, I heard you on this thing, and I recognize. I mean, you know, I'm starting to tweak out in the middle of the night. I can't really sleep well. I, I'm the, all my body is starting to warn me now. That's I'm glad that you have hypersensitivity to your body. Most women, if they they only get there when they're just too late, when they're already sick, yeah. right? Just caught in the, in the in the machine, right? So, so they come to me with badass, right? But all of a sudden, they they realize they don't want to work so hard anymore. They realize the money really doesn't really cut it you know because they don't have companionship and they feel abandoned so you're working you're proud you have titles and huh, that's not really satisfying by the way both men and women complain of this right like powerful and successful both men and women when the relationships aren't working out feel like failures number one you know, like uh, gauge for being happy is a, a healthy living relationship for both men and women. Number one, not money, right? Like relationships, love relationships. So, like, so women wake up to the sense of like, I, I want to slow down, but I can't because I painted myself in the corner with this business, this this house, this car, this lifestyle, this image. I get it. It's very masculine, by the way. Image, status, masculine, right? Showing off, masking in. So caught in the male pattern, you know, go girl, showing your girlfriends. Ugh. But now they realize I don't want to do something. I want to slow down. I don't want to, I don't want to get sick. You know, it's, it's, I'm sensing that. And, and I can't attract men, right? So I go, so what I do is like, okay, masking it up to here. Let's say masculine and feminine. So this is overdeveloped. Develop, this has been neglected. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's, a lot of times it's childhood injuries. Can't trust men, can't trust people, I'm not good enough. I get to go fight for myself, right? Like, so I get it. The first thing with my clients, we have to do the baggage cleaning first. So typically this comes from a childhood injury. Same with men, men who are feminized, who can't step up and can't man up. Have been something happened. It's always the same. So so I don't suggest ever to dismantle this. We don't take you apart. Like everything you build, oh, hallelujah. You go, girl, fantastic. I'm just suggesting let's, let's recalibrate this. Yeah, and recalibrate the feminine if people can't. Bring the not feminine watching. back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the line that I use, a little crass, but it goes, I go, you know, you can be badass all you want, except at the end of the day, you have to leave your balls in the desk drawer. <laughs> you can't bring your balls out in the world. You can't pull your, ball, you pull your balls in men's faces. That, you know, you're dating. Look how tough I am. Put your balls. That, that's not what yeah. men are looking for. Men don't give a shit about the money you make. It's interesting part of your life, but if you're going to put your balls in his face and act like a man and go, "Look, all I'm doing, I'm starting to like," women don't get that, right? They're so proud of it. I get it, but that shit's got to stay at work. If you want a masculine man, if you want a feminine man, throw your balls out all you want. They'll be right there, encouraging you to work more. Yeah, and ah, ah, and like, I don't. Come on. I, what do we have to say with? you know, same sex relationships. I know there's still same thing, same thing right? There's still that polarity but exact because same thing. with, exact with same attraction, thing. there has to be polarity is what yep. my understanding is. Absolutely. Now it's interesting because actually gay couples taught us how this all works. Hmm. Of, course. of course. Interesting. Yeah. No, but because, you know, we could always blame men for being men and women for being women and for the complications. So, you know, it's always somebody's fault, right? So yep, then we yeah, put yeah. two guys together 
right? And some fight like cats and dogs that we see, you know, like regular straight couples. And then some last 35 years. Huh, how does that work? We go study. Same with lesbian couples. Same with straight couples. By the way. All the couples who succeed are polarized. Period. Period. Now, it's temperamental, right? As opposed to injured, right? Like, so like I said, injured Damage, I don't want to say damage like it's terrible, it's just life as a child, you know, the injuries of our childhood. But women who are damaged as children have to man up to survive and become masculinized, and they're the ones struggling with balance. They can't find a sweet spot. They're like when you say, I can listen to my body, right? These women can't stop. Like you say, I know what they they can't stop. Like there's this over, there's an anxiety to it, even, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and same with men. Men that are broken don't step to be into being masculine and expect women to take care of them and they become the players and the softies and they, you know, whatever. So these are coming from brokenness in the first place yeah. kind of thing. So that's why. But get this. In every relationship, gay, straight, lesbian, that, that work, they're polarized in temperament, not brokenness. That's important. But in temperament, temperament like this, in temperament like this, Right. One is one is extroverted, the other one's introverted. One is wild and crazy, the one's like calm down. One is like spontaneous, the other one's like, let's think about this, right? Like so and get this, not only love dynamics, because those are the dynamics that are most polarized, right? Because you bring love into the equation, there's more, there's more expectation, there's, there's more chance of hurt feelings and derailment and all that crap that comes along with it. But again, get this, have this. Every partnership that works is polarized. I have mm -hmm. these guys that I, that I know here. They do personal development workshop, two guys. Now, these two, they're not in a relationship. They're not their partners. It's business partner. They're, they're making a killing. Get this. Here's the same thing I'm saying. Back to nature. Back to, it's not gender. It's temperament and complementary, right? The one guy <laughs> is the guy on stage. That I, he likes the mic. He loves the mic. Get him in front of people. He opens all the doors, talks to everybody, extroverted in everybody's face. The friendly guy gets the rooms going. That guy, his buddy, the part, the business partner, wants nothing to do with stage, doesn't want to talk to people, is introverted. He's the writer. He's the one that comes up with the concept of the workshop and all this stuff. Right? Two pieces come together to make a, a, a business. A dance is the same. A relationship is the same. They're polarized. So I'm not saying what's happening is when women, especially if they're broken, they go too masculine, right? They attract feminine. That works for a while, but that, it always breaks after about 10 years, which is, again, because nature doesn't really want that. Does it work that way? She, she loses respect for him. You know what I mean? And she's his mother now, so they can't have sex. Oh, it's a disaster. But polarity is essential in temperament. So typically, men and women, what works best, again, back to nature, and you have to find your sweet spot within this, it's all negotiable, is he's going to want to lead more. He's going to want to push more. He's going to want to control more. He's going to want to handle more. He's going to take more risk. He's going to be more out there conquering more. And she supports all that machine of his. And as he's making money, you know, she could take care of his children. She could take care of the house, right? She could have her own dreams on the side, as well that's not competing with his but the dance is she's she he's more of a pusher a leader if you want in this field and he can only do this because she's supporting his leadership right and when she as she's supporting his leadership he gets to support it in a way that a woman needs to be supported in order to be available and present and have the space right so it's support that comes differently it's interesting so the kind of support men need to be super successful is a woman who supports his leadership, gets him, supports his ego boy. Do you know what I mean? And then that he makes more money than he thought was possible because he's doing it for us, for them, for the family, right? Works more be behind every great man is a great woman. That's the that's the dynamic. Like, not that she's working as hard as he is, she's working the backstory, which is as hard, not easy as hell, right? It's not easy either. It's different. There's a dance again, right? Two different, two different um, temperament. And so she, if you feel supported, he goes and kills it. And then he supports everybody with his finances and his space and his da, 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 da. So it's a good cocktail. It's pretty classic, right? And it's a modern way to do this. 
but you can't expect men to act like women. And if you expect women to be like men, it doesn't work. We went too far. We replaced the roles. Now we're trying to get together backwards. It was always difficult. In, the na in nature, it's always difficult. Now we do this, bend back, it doesn't work. I'm just saying, this is what yeah. I do every single day, you know? And when people hear this for the first time, women get all like, huh, you know? Like, he wants to be a hero. He wants to kill himself for you. He wants you to relax. He wants you to be good. He wants you to be comfortable and happy and relax because when you are, he's relaxed. <laughs> That's all he wants. He'll kill himself for this. Now, and no manipulation needed. This is, again, nature. Well, so, okay. So, women want heroes. Men want to be heroes. This should work. Right? Yeah. But it's not. Because often we misunderstand each other. And again, when we mix up, you know, you're too good to be just a, a wife or a mother. Or Who said that? Because my wife isn't too good for any of that. My, yeah. my wife gets everything. I, I so, think you know? from listening for this and a little oh. bit outside the perspective here, I think a lot of, you know, the over masculine and women, especially millennial women, um, is because we are still stuck in that masculine i'll say patriarchal type of paradigm where we're like we in order to succeed it has to look like this more 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 and not realizing we, we got our own game to play oh my god we got our know, own game to play why don't we part, it, it's like these you know how people say the hacks out there you know just five steps to this five times yeah your hack <laughs> is you it, it's if anybody takes anything out of this it's your internal wisdom. And that's why I started the show. You know, the, the tagline is your body and emotions are not in the way they're leading your way because I have pushed down those things before, whether in relationships or in my own health and it's blown up in my face. And so I've learned. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I'm, I'm going to guess this because you're actually, I see you, I'm with you. I don't have like, I feel you yeah. from here, believe it or not. And you have a natural feminine presence first. Mm -hmm. So you have this, you're feminine first and you put badass on top of it, but that's because you're still more feminine at your core. I'm telling you, I'm watching you. I see it. I, I can hear it in your voice because you're more feminine first. As you step into badass, you know, you know, when you're going too far because your body goes, honey, uh, uh, right? Uh, yeah. Pull it back. Well, that's unusual in my world to some level because they get badass first. Girl, to be feminine is pointless it's weak we don't need that shit so what i think the derailment is again not the sweet spot is women decide to act like men in the world in, in the idea of that's going to make them you know yeah. interesting powerful women but they actually act like men neglect their feminine side and that's where everything goes to hell the mm -hmm. same with feminine men who deny their masculinity and women can respect them they don't do nothing they don't make any money they don't they're Manipulate those, by the way, the toxic ones, because those are the ones who cheat, manipulate, lie, yeah. con, right? They're, they're not masculine men, the feminine men who don't know who they are. So it's an interesting thing, right? So my whole point is sweet spot. Sweet spot. So, and you're still they, badass. You can be a feminine badass. Oh my like, God. Yes. And that's now, that's what I'm all about, the witchy woo part of it. That's the feminine. And that's this though. Yeah. And 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 oh my god, oh my god. You know, again, what's it, from an outsider looking in, if you think you know, men have all the power. So why? Because they have the money, they do the business, they do pushing, they do the conquering, right? They, they you see them go, it's like, oh, well, let's do that. This is how you get to be successful. So women become acting like men, yep. which is a problem. Where you get this? Oh, I hope I can say it right. Your your superpower is not in you you being masculine. Your superpower is you stepping and using your feminine. To get everything you want. Amen. To magnetize everyone your way. To invite the masculine to support. To invite the masculine to be heroes. To invite the masculine to adjust. To step up. It's an invitation. Yeah. It's not acting like a man. You act like a man. You repel man. All my clients. So what's the, what your superpower is your femininity. It's your yeah. magic. It's the stuff men die for. So yeah. it's not weak. It's not less it's not passive it's so not fucking passive but we emulate what's obvious we forgot the mystical part that is divine feminine that actually makes the world go around i believe 
I want to say this. I believe that if women really get in touch in the power of their feminine, if you really knew how powerful you are and you got together, you could change the planet like this. Oh, yeah. And that's my like mission this. is to empower women to, to, to be able to do that. Because when you can tap into that, you're you're tapping into God. Let's just let's just say what it Amen. is. You are the universe and you are you are a vessel to channel, whether it's you know, to birth a child, to birth a business. Like you can use this in a relationship, what we just talked about. You can re- yeah. use it in manifesting abundance or a lifestyle, <sighs> whatever you want. And that's innately hardwired in your DNA and your cells. And I, I don't want to close the show because this has been an amazing conversation, but I feel like this is a good cherry on top. Was there anything else you wanted to add to that before we start to close well, the that, show down, Andre? Yes, yeah, so I want to add to this. Like, so from, from that understanding, from your yeah. perspective, you get it, right? Like, again, emulating masculine seems the way to do because that's how shit gets done and that's how we get power and money. Right? No, so if, you, if you're going to go, why isn't it? This is my question for you. See if you can take me there. That's obvious. I get it. You know, emulate men. This is how you get shit done. So why isn't it so obvious to women how powerful the feminine is? Right? Well, why isn't it so, such a blind spot? Like, like women, you know, I know you, you question yourself all the time. You have this, Chick in your head telling you everything's wrong with you. I know you get beat up by your own inner voice. Yeah, yeah. I know that. I know that. I know that. I know that. I teach this stuff. And so, like, we don't have that. So, that's, we haven't, whatever. But, like, magnetism of the warmth, the radiance, it's like the joy that it brings to every living being, you know, uh, like a feminine woman walks in a room, the room changes. Yeah. And all of, a sudden, all of a sudden, the room is warm. Like every, everyone pays attention. It brings everybody present. This is, by the way, why men want to be around feminine women because it brings us out, out of our head and present. Like, like I'm not thinking of anything else when I'm with a, a feminine woman who's lovely, right? I'm, I'm, I'm all caught up in the way she looks, the way she talks, the way she moves, the way she smells, the way she holds her fork. Oh my God. Like, you know, and like I'm, pre- like I'm yep. you know, so we need you to get, get us out of our head and get us down here in our bodies, present, where you like us the most, by the way. You know, we're always up in our freaking heads that I could be next to you and it's like, you don't even know I'm here. Well, yeah, that's male brain. Yep. Right? So we need you to get us more like humanized. We need you for that. If you leave, leave us our own device, <laughs> demise, right? You need to feel safe in order to shine and glow more. We need you need us yep. to protect you to make you feel safe, so you can be even more radiant, even more yep. loving, warmth to everything around you. Like I see my clients like step back into their bodies, slide into bodies with all kinds of practices. I didn't answer the question, by the way, about examples to get there, but and they go like men start noticing them, which they never had me before. Just boys were you know coming out. now. Men are like smiling looking opening doors she goes women okay it looks so lovely today they get compliments yeah. right the people talk to them open up you go children come up to them dogs come sniff sniffing like it's it's magnetic yeah it is but how is that how is that weak where is where does this come to be weak yeah i, I think for, for me and that's why one of the reasons i named it this this uh podcast witchy wellness because the conception of dark is bad witchy being bad because Mm. that is fucking powerful and all knowing. And so I do think subconsciously or consciously we are averse to going into N word, the the depths and tapping into that power because we are taught to be afraid of what is the most powerful, but you know what, regardless of that shit, because it's just shit, (laughs) it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility. I don't care how good of a childhood you had or how bad of a childhood you had. I thought I always had a pretty ideal like childhood, but then I grew up and I go, Oh fuck. I took a lot of <laughs> shit with me. You know, like I, we I have, a, you have, we all do. We all do. It's not your parents' fault. It's only your responsibility. Yep. Yep. That's yep. that. That's, that's my soapbox talk. It's just yeah. my favorite line that I use to my clients, you know, why, how I go, can listen, what happened to you is that you're not responsible for anything that happened to you as a child. It's not your yeah. fault. But as an adult, you're 100 responsible to exactly. handle your shit. Mm-hmm. You know, so what are you going to do? Complain, bitch, be a victim the rest of your life, lay down, blame the world? Or if you want to be badass, this is where you step into being a badass, right? Like handle your shit. And then there's a lot of there's a lot of people who can help 
you know what I mean? Like yeah. in any any asset of your life that's derailed. And so you're right, like it's it's on you. You can blame the world all you want and your your shitty family, your parents. Well, okay, that's not gonna help you. So we can do. What are you gonna how do? About, how about we handle that shit? Yeah. How about you, how about you get to work? <laughs> yeah. Know? Let's do it. And this is a beautiful place to start. Um, I'll link everything in the show notes, everybody, for Andre, but we close the show every single way. Thank you so much for being on here today. I, ha- um, I have something for you before you close, if you don't mind. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Oh, that's okay. I, ha- I just I, have, I have, I have right a gift. Ahead. I have a gift for your listeners. Oh, awesome. That part- is that okay? Yeah, yeah, go right ahead. I was good. It so, might be so, good for this. You know, my mission is actually to change, put a dent in the cultural belief of what's happening, like badass women, soft men, like the equality yeah. stuff is destroying everything. I want to recalibrate more with what I say, the sweet spots and what nature will work best, right? It's, it's a God calling. It's I used to resent it because it's so huge. Because the calling is to to put a dent in the culture, to actually alter the, the yeah. pace of our culture. Because the uh, the pace we're going right now, families can't hold it together, which means children are raised outside of a healthy two parent homes, which destroys their ability to create bonds as an adult, which creates they can't. So if the family system falls apart you know everybody's miserable and society falls apart so we're going down the tunnel like we're sinking right now so it's on me somehow like to put a dent in that and to recalibrate or help people recalibrate and rethink it rethink it you know it's very very hard to go against the cultural tidal wave that we're under right now it has to stop right so my mission is to help men and women and and i'm trying to spread this message wide and big I'm trying to get it even my own TV show because it's actually rather easy to teach, honestly. It's just nobody teaches it, right? Nature, instinct, bodies, chemistry, you know, makes me what makes both of us happy, happier, blah, blah, blah. So I want to change the world. I want to change the culture. That's my, that's my. So what I'm doing is I'm doing now, I have small groups, I have one on one clients, I have, you know, the couples. I'm offering you listeners, if anybody listened to me and not so offended, <laughs> I'm not taking us back to the 50s. I'm all about this modern way to do this. If you want a relationship, you have to learn like ballroom dancers. This takes practice. This takes time. This takes learning. And this takes stepping on each other's toes in the beginning, but it gets a little practice, gets smoother and smoother. So like, that's all. Nobody knows how to do this anymore in the modern way. It's too complicated. We flip the script on everything. So everyone's confused. That's what I'm offering. So if anybody is is compelled to, like, want to talk to me about their circumstance, right, to, to get out of that whatever is not working, if you go to www.andregroupcoaching.com, it's a landing page that takes you to my calendar. You could book an hour session. I will talk to you for free. We'll talk about what's going on with you. What's, you know, when you, everybody has a sense of what's not working, obviously. What's the word? We peel the onion on your past. Everybody has the decision they made as young children. I'm not good enough. I can't trust men. I can't trust anybody. I suck, right? The world, the world is a dangerous place. Da 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 da. Whatever message you have, that that stay imprinted, and then we get stuck in that, and that becomes a crutch later on in life that keeps you from flourishing and having choices. So that call within an hour, seriously, we go right to the source of your bad decisions through your past, which makes you go, huh? So all of a sudden, that whole idea. Fifteen minutes. I'm really good at this. In fifteen minutes, you get to go. There's nothing wrong with you. This created that, and now that's why you're on that track. <gasps> liberating so there's no more like what's wrong with me it's more like oh wow peel the onion now so this is what happened we're here now from here what's the dream and then we talk about if you want to help you get there so it's an hour call whether we work together or not in the future it's it's for some people life-changing it's really kind of profound it's also fun it's not scary because i'm that guy so I'm offering this to your, your listeners if they want to investigate a little bit and you know I'll andregroupcoaching.com just book it book an hour and we'll talk and uh the rest of it you have on my link Project Equinox on uh Instagram Project Equinox on Facebook I also have I'll send you the link cuz no it's on my it's on my signature email I have a private group Facebook group that's free 
I have a 17, 18, almost 1800 women in there, which I put material. I do an event like Thursday night, I go live for free, but you have to be in the group to see it. And I bring these pieces. So you could part of a community. Yes, of women, yes, yes. You know, so that's, so I have a lot of goodies. Um, but the, the, the gift is really the hour call if anybody's curious. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, we'll link that in the show notes and that. You might have, you, you could probably go with a completely different answer than what you just gave. But the question I want to ask is thank you for your time today and, and honoring your mission because it is you're you're being the hero for masculine and the feminine here. I just gotta gotta put that out there. Thank you. As as the listeners, how can as a big big hug of gratitude, how can we be of service for you in return for your presence today? Well, if you stay, that's so sweet. I don't think I think that's the first time anybody's asked me that. <laughs> um, what I find incredible is the ladies that I work with, each one at a time, become role models for a strong, powerful feminine. They become role models, and women around them start going. What is going on with you, right? Just they have, they have, they step into that glorious feminine with joy and peace. But power, there's no role models for this. There's no role models for powerful feminine, right? It's always masculine, powerful. So my my ladies become that, which then inspires other women around them, and they're curious. So if you could channel anybody coming my way, go to my website, send your friends to my website. You know, I have a lot of YouTube stuff. I have a lot of podcast stuff. There's a lot of stuff that i wrote and stuff that if you just like sp- sp- spread it out to your network or the you know, some of your, your your best girlfriend even if you don't fully connect with it like women come at me from like all over the place they found me randomly that i don't know how i found you but thank you know i mean thank god i found you like there's something divine about it happened so the way to help me is just get it out there and see who is needing of this today i completely lives. agree and if you i always close it the same way is if you've thought of somebody there's a reason why someone popped in your head if you listen to this episode please share it because you never know what that could do to change somebody's life i know i've yeah. had my own intuition speak to me t- numerous times on podcasts through books interview whatever you name it so if you get that intuitive hit listen to that feminine and pass it along but thank you so much Andre for coming on I know this is a beautiful longer conversation but it was needed I know a lot of people are going to resonate if you're triggered you need to look at that seriously if you're triggered by anything in life you need to look at where that Mm -hmm. is coming from because that's coming from a wound but anyway I digress thank you for coming on the show Andre I appreciate you so much thank you John and remember open up surrender Trust and let your body lead the way.